The Douglas Hart Nature Center presents Virtual Field Trips. This virtual field trip is froggy fun. Hi everyone, Miss Abby here at Douglas Hart Nature Center and I'm on the hunt for a special critter here at Douglas Hart. Do you want to guess what it is? It has big eyes on top of its head, moist skin, and it hops away at the sign of trouble. Have you figured it out yet? It's a frog! Do you want to join me on my hunt? Awesome! Before we get started, let's go over some froggy basics. Here are some frog facts. Frogs belong to the kingdom Animalia. That includes all animals. Within Animalia, frogs belong to the phylum Chordata. That includes all vertebrates. Within Chordata, frogs belong to the class Amphibia, or amphibians. The class amphibia includes frogs, toads, salamanders, newts, and Sicilians. These four-limbed, moist-skinned creatures can live on land or water, and they breathe with lungs and gills. Amphibians are also cold-blooded, which means their body temperature varies with the environment around them. And lastly, amphibians lay lots of squishy, gel-like eggs. Amphibians and reptiles are often studied together. That's called herpetology. So sometimes it can be confusing as to what animals are amphibians and which are reptiles. So let's go over that. Reptiles belong to the class Reptilia, and that includes turtles, snakes, lizards, crocodiles, alligators, and tuataras. While there are some similarities between amphibians and reptiles, there are a lot of differences. Reptiles have dry, scaly skin and may or may not have four limbs. They are cold-blooded like amphibians and usually lay eggs, but their eggs have a leathery outer shell. It's time for an on-your-own opportunity! Can you organize these animals into reptiles and amphibians? Be sure to pause the video! The tree frog, salamander, and toad are amphibians. The snapping turtle, alligator, and garter snake are reptiles. Good job! In the class amphibia, frogs belong to the order Anura. These moist, smooth-skinned creatures lack tails and breathe air through lungs as adults. Adult frogs lay their squishy, gel-like eggs in clusters in the water. While frogs are the masters of camouflage, sitting still and being quiet for long periods of time to catch prey or escape predators, they have many other adaptations that help them. Frogs have big bulging eyes on top of their head that's great for spotting predators and prey. They also have an excellent sense of hearing. Not to mention, they have powerful back legs with webbed toes for jumping and swimming to catch prey or escape predators. Of course, we can't forget about their large, broad mouth and sticky tongue that allows them to snatch up their prey really quickly. Great! Now you know what makes a frog a frog, but what kind of frogs will we find here in Illinois? Let's find out. Wood frog. Illinois chorus frog. Plains Leopard Frog Boreal Coarse Frog Green Tree Frog Green Frog Upland Coarse Frog Cope's Gray Tree Frog Western Chorus Frog Bird Voiced Tree Frog Southern Leopard Frog Eastern Gray Tree Frog Northern Leopard Frog 
pickerel frog. Cricket frog. Crawfish frog. Spring peeper. American bullfrog. So now we're ready to find some frogs. But where will we find them at? Let's think about their adaptations and where they like to live at Douglas Heart, especially in the springtime. Springtime is what we like to call baby boom. So where would a frog like to live and have its babies? As mentioned before, the adult frog lays squishy gel-like eggs. And what hatches from those eggs? Tadpoles! Tadpoles look more like fish than frogs at this stage. They have long tails, gills for breathing, and small mouth parts primarily used for eating vegetation. So where do they live? In the water. They have tails for swimming, gills for breathing underwater, and they primarily feed off of algae and other water vegetation. As the tadpole grows larger, it starts to undergo metamorphosis. That is the process of a young animal transforming into an adult in a few stages with significant body changes. The tadpole begins to grow its hind legs and then its front legs. It is soon a froglet. As you can see, the froglet has a tail. But we've already learned that frogs don't have tails. So as the froglet grows bigger and its tail slowly but surely disappears, it is then an adult frog. We know frogs need to lay their eggs in water, but unlike tadpoles, frogs have the ability to be in or out of the water. But just like tadpoles, they have adaptations that make them suitable to live in a water habitat. Their moist skin is permeable, which means it allows them to intake water through their skin instead of having to swallow it. Oh, and those powerful legs often have webbing between their toes to increase surface area of their feet to swim better. Have you ever tried opening your eyes underwater? It hurts! Frogs have an eyelid called a nictitating membrane that protects their eyes underwater. It's like you wearing goggles when you swim. Have you ever gotten water up your nose when swimming? Ouch! That hurts! Frogs don't have that problem because they can close their nostrils to prevent water from entering their lungs when underwater. As you can see, frogs are built to live in or around a water habitat. And as if that wasn't enough, ponds are also home to their favorite foods. Insects! Many insects lay their eggs in or around water, which provides yummy food for frogs as they grow up. They love to snack on a variety of insects, including flies, mosquitoes, and dragonflies. However, frogs are opportunist feeders, which means they will eat many other things besides insects like worms. It's a frog-eat-frog -frog world out there, but nothing compares to the hunger of the American bullfrog. Take the bullfrog, for example. They'll eat spiders, scorpions, rodents, snakes, fish, and just about anything else that passes in front of them. But how As you can tell, water habitats, like ponds, are the perfect habitats for frogs to live in some or all of their lives. Great! So now we know what we're looking for and where to find them. So let's go check out the ponds at Douglas Heart Nature Center. Welcome to our pond! This habitat provides a healthy home for a variety of wildlife, including, but not limited to, geese, fish, turtles, and of course, frogs. Come on, let's check out the wetland. It is definitely baby boom time. To learn more about the wetlands and geese, watch the other virtual field trips. When you're on the hunt for frogs, sometimes before you see them, you'll hear them. But what do they say? 
I know a lot of you are thinking ribbit ribbit, but I have a secret to tell you. Frogs in Illinois don't say ribbit ribbit. What? That frog is the Pacific tree frog and it lives nowhere near here. So what do our frogs in Illinois say? Let's find out. Frogs have vocal cords like humans, but they also have a vocal sac that is like an inflatable amplifier. To start calling, a frog breathes in and then closes its nostrils. It forces the air backward and forward between its lungs and vocal sac so that its vocal cords can make the air vibrate, which results in the sound of their call. We know how frogs make calls, but what are their reasons for calling? The number one reason is mating. Males make calls to attract females so they can reproduce. Frogs also call to warn others of their territories especially during mating season. If a frog grabs onto another frog, some may give off a release call to tell the frog to let them go. And lastly, frogs will give a distress call if they are caught by a predator in hopes it frightens them and it lets them go. You now know how and why frogs call, so let's learn some Illinois frog calls. Let's narrow this down to a few frogs you may hear locally. Listen closely for these frog calls. It's time for an on your own opportunity. Let's see how well you know the frog calls. The call will play and then you will see the circle timer come up. Once it completes the circle, the answer will be revealed. It's the American Bullfrog. It's the spring peeper. It's the Cope's gray tree frog. Good job. Frogs are a crucial part of many ecosystems. Frogs have a significant ecological role. They help control the insect population, and they are also a food source for many other animals. Frogs are important for scientific research on reproduction, growth, and development, as well as medicines. Not to mention, they are indicator species. Frogs indicate the health of an ecosystem because they are sensitive to changes in the water. If the water contains pollutants, frogs can intake them through their permeable skin and die, so there will be a decline in population. However, if the water quality is good, the population will increase. As you've learned, frogs play a crucial role in many ecosystems. But unfortunately, amphibians are on the decline due to habitat destruction, invasive species, disease, pollution, and climate change. But don't worry, there is hope, and that's you. You can make a difference and help conserve frogs and other wildlife. As Jane Goodall once said, what you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Thank you for hopping into this virtual Froggy Fun field trip. Be sure to do the field trip follow-up at the end of the video. See you next time! For the field trip follow-up, research ways you can help conserve frogs and other wildlife. Then make a creative, colorful poster about what you learned. And be sure to send us a picture of your poster by tagging us on social media or emailing it. Thank you for supporting the Douglas Hart Nature Center.